Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Sean here from Insights, and today we're going to set up a brand new ET200 SP PLC, a CPU that sits on the ET200 IO. And let's go ahead to the overhead cam here, and you can see that uh, here I have the uh, CPU, and here I have one of the uh, interface modules from a previous video that we did. And here you can see I don't have that bus adapter. I, I don't have any extras, so I figured let's see if we can get this to work without the bus adapter. I thought that would be cool. Of course, I could just take this one out and put it there. But in any case, what I want to do now, though, is let's get a close-up look at this so you can see the article number and all that good information. And then you'll see that card there. When I first uh, downloaded to it, it didn't like the card, so I had to format that card. I'll show you where that is. Um in TIA portal, but for now, let's go ahead and switch over to the computer here. And I've already created a blank program. And the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a new device. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna choose ET200 CPUs, and I want the SP, that's what I have. And then I'm gonna do unspecified, okay? So I can detect it. And this just takes a second to add that to this project. Okay, there it is. Let's minimize this guy and we'll click on detect. And everything looks good. Let's do a start search. Okay, I found it. Found it as an S7-1500 type. And you can see here I could flash ID LEDs if I needed to, but it's only when I got connected. So let's go ahead and do a detect. This will not only find the CPU, but it'll find all the IO modules as well. Here it comes. Okay, great. So here's a unit here. Let's go ahead and zoom in there. You can see it's a 1512SP F-1PN. Okay. And it shows I have a bus adapter, but I don't. I don't know why. And then it does correctly find my bases because I have light, dark, light, dark, okay? And, and found the I.O. modules as well. So that's good. So that's the first thing. Now I do want to change while I'm here, the IP address. I'm going to make this 2.216, I think is the next one I haven't used. And of course we're on a class B network. And I'm going to leave the default Profinet device name. Of course you probably wouldn't use PLC1 in your factory, but for working on the workbench here and for training, it's perfectly fine. So with that done, um, the next thing I want to do is add in that I.O. Now we're not going to reset that I.O. Okay, you can see down here, that's the CPU. And then this is the I.O. we set up previously. So we're not going to um, reset that because I already did that in the previous episode. So we'll go online. We'll go to hardware detection. We'll go to Profinet devices. Let's search. And in a moment, it should find it. Okay, let me select it. Excellent, add device. Okay, now it's saying here, check the selection of devices from the hardware catalog to make sure it shows the right ones. I'm just gonna double click in here really quick. And the modules look right, the bases look right. Uh, I do want to set his, or really check to make sure it kept the settings that I set previously, and it did. That's good. Excellent. So let's go back here, and let's make sure we assign this distributed I.O. to this CPU. Okay, that's good. And if we take a look in here and look at the I.O. addresses, okay, that got zero, because these are only eight-point modules. This one got zero as well, Q0 versus I0. And then if we go over to the distributed, let's see what address he got. He got five and whoops, he got five and he got five as well. Excellent. So at this point, um, the only thing I may have to do again, if I had a brand new uh, memory card or if I used a memory card in another device, uh, I may have to come down here and format the memory card. So let me go on here. This is also where I came to reset the device to factory default. So let's go into functions. Here you can format the actual device in the field's memory card. And you can also reset it to factory defaults and decide whether or not you want to delete the IP address. So I haven't been through that already before I started filming. So let's go back up to our project here. 
and that's connected the IP addresses were set correctly so the next thing I need to do is I'm not going to bore you with uh, watching me write a program to test out the push buttons and pilot lights out here but what I am going to do is copy those tags in and those uh, rungs in from another project so I'll go ahead and do that now paste Okay, let's go over to OB1 and copy in those rungs. Okay, I already have them all selected. Copy and let's see, paste. So now let's go ahead and select the PLC and compile. Yes, and because this is a brand new program, I have to disable the password. I don't want to set a password for my uh, you know, testing here on the workbench. It's a good idea to have passwords in the field, but you don't need them in training or when you're creating videos like this, tutorial videos. So with that done, I think we're ready to download. Let's go ahead and select download. Okay. Okay, let's start a search. Looks like it found it out there. There it is, 1512 SPF1 PN. We saw that earlier. Let's go ahead and load our program into it. All right, go ahead and load it in. And this just takes a couple of seconds here. And then what we'll do is we'll go online and we're looking for all greens here. Excellent. Okay, got all greens here. Let's go ahead and close that down. Let's go ahead and open OB1 and monitor this. Let's go to the top here. Now it's not in run mode. Okay, so let me go ahead and put it in run mode. I can't because the selector is in stop. So let me reach over here and put it up. Okay, give it a moment here. There, it's in run mode now. Everything's looking good. So let's go ahead and I'll just reach over here while we're looking on the computer. Yeah, that looks like it's working. All right, so let me switch over to the overhead camera and let's try out the, you can see everything's in the green, both of these units. Let me take my uh, headshot off so you can see everything's in the green. So with that, let's go ahead and test these push buttons. Okay, I've just matched the inputs to the outputs. Okay, there we go. So that is how easy it is to commission a brand new uh, S7 1500ET200 SP CPU, right? But the advantages of this is that it has all those, you know, high-end features, all those extra data types and uh, whatnot that you would have with an S7 1500 versus a 1200. Um, but you also have to have a memory card. And again, I have to format that to get that to work. Um, with the 1200, you don't have to. It's optional, but you don't have to have the memory card. With the 1500, you do. Also, I had to uh, keep in mind that I had a physical switch on here. I like the 1200, which is a software switch. I'm talking about the G1 now. But uh, in any case, I, I think this is a really nice line. I'd love to know what you guys think. We've done four videos, five videos on this line. And I really, really enjoyed working with it. I want to thank Siemens for sending in the hardware. Not only so we could do a video on it, but they also sponsored the video to make it ad free. So all my opinions on my own, but they did uh, uh, help underwrite the cost of film and edit this episode and publish it so that I wouldn't have to turn on ads, which I always appreciate. The other thing is all of this equipment is now available to students who come out here to the automation school to learn and uh, to do hands on. That's why these boards can be added, you know, plopped into the training stations um, and, uh, you know, added to the existing hardware that's out there, which is a uh, comfort panel, I'm sorry, a unified basic panel and an S7-1200. Um, hope to add the S7-1500 to those stations so you can choose 1200 or 1500. That's, uh, that'll be something we do in the future. But in any case, um, if you want to get some hands-on, we can do private courses just for uh, your company if you want to, or you can uh, sign up for the waiting list for our general enrollment courses. But with that, again, I want to thank Siemens and I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed this series. We're going to do another series. I got a couple other videos I got to get out, but then we're going to do another series on machine mount or what some of us know as uh, on machine style IO from Siemens. 
um, and take a look at it and take a look at some IO link as well. And uh, we're working with multiple vendors, all the big names. So, um, but in any case, uh, this hardware and the timing is right to do these Siemens videos. That's why we're doing them. So in any case, I do want to wish you all good health and happiness. And until next time, my friends, peace.